Hi, it's Byron here. So as you all know that uh, I've been doing something that is really different. Uh, it's the 1.6 King Tiger from Warslot. Uh, it's quite a difficult and challenging project for me because usually I'm doing this and this and this and now I have to do this. And this is simply the best and the, the biggest model I've ever owned. So big thank you to Warslot guys, you've been very kind to provide me such a fantastic testing piece. So I thought it would be nice to document everything and share with you guys all my progress and uh, my experience about the whole project. And this is gonna be a multi-part video, so um, I will update constantly and just hope you like it. So this particular model is a pre-production version, which means not everything is finalized, so I won't go too deep into every details. Just a few key points to get everyone started. It's a pre-assembled, full metal constructed, fully functional RC tank, weighs a bit less than 200 kg, it runs on batteries, packs loads of serious details, and probably costs a kidney. Filming this beast is not an easy job, and it took me quite some effort to make everything looks right. I'd probably do a full review later when they sent me the production version, but even for now, I'm excited as hell. This thing is mainly made of aluminum and steel, and most of the parts are bolted internally, so no assembly holes are visible on the surface, which is a big plus. It's just a pity that in order to paint it, I have to make the weld seams myself. I guess it's just not very practical for the manufacturer to make complex, realistic, and in-scale weld seams on these metal plates. I start making the well seams using modeling putty with the aid of lots of reference photos. The German war machines are famous for their complexity and even the well seams have a lot of different textures and patterns. It almost took us three days to complete the whole vehicle. And then I need to remove all the accessories and fenders alike before painting. This is probably one of the most enjoyable part especially when you know that these two clips are actually robust and playable and won't break easily like the photo edge parts that we all familiar with on small scale models. Because of the huge mass of the model, the tracks are the hardest part to remove, so a lifting jack or a muscular friend may come in handy. And for painting purposes, it is not really necessary to remove all the rear wheels on this one, otherwise it will be very time consuming. So after removing all the accessories, I cleaned the entire tank with the rubbing alcohol to make sure that the surface is free of dirt and grease. Now it's time to prime the beast. I chose a car primer which needs extra hotener to get set, and from the smell of it, I'm pretty sure that will be very tough once dried. 
because there's always a positive correlation between pain toughness and its toxic level. I know I surely need a bigger gun, but this is my biggest at the moment, and it can get the job done slowly. Now here we have it. The primer still needs time to dry and set, but the result is quite pleasing. I will leave you there for now, and if you like this video, share with your friends, and I'll see you in the next one.